Huntington. Last time I was here, I was heading south to go down to Morden today. Staying in zone one, it so should be zone two. To do end of the line at Battersea Power Station. Battersea Power Station station, along with Nine Elms, are the newest additions to the London Underground Network, taking the total number of tube stations from 270 to 272 when it opened in September 2021. With it, it meant that there was now another new terminus station in the Zone 1 area, along with Aldgate and Elephant and Castle. But really, Nine Elms and Battersea Power Station should be in Zone 2, and you can see how they were forced into Zone 1 when you see this bulge on a geographical map showing where the stations are in relation to the zones. Now I've come on a Sunday weekend, which I think is busier than a weekday, for the main reason, the obvious reason, to go outside, let's get it done first, and that is of course here at Battersea Power Station, Station, yes, we're still doing that gag, uh, this is major shopping centre. Battersea Power Station is one of London's largest redevelopment schemes, which transformed the former derelict power station building into this commercial focus project. The building actually comprises of two power stations named A and B, and after being decommissioned in the 1970s, was given a Grade 2 listed status. But it remained empty until 2014, until plans finally came to fruition to completely redevelop it and the surrounding area, which opened up to the public in October 2022. Now something that I'm pretty sure you won't know is that Battersea Power Station station, the station, is due to have a second uh, exit and entrance. At the moment, when you come through the exit barriers, you go left, so you go up the escalators and that takes you to the shopping centre development area. But at some point, you'll be able to turn right, come out a second entrance, and that will take you to this area down here, which is still, as you can see at the moment, uh, being developed under construction. Uh, it'll be finished, I don't know when, but at some point in the future, I can't but help think that the shops here at the moment don't get much footfall because that second entrance exit hasn't yet been completed, but at some point in the future, it will be. Such a bright, sunny summer June day. I love it here in Battersea. Uh, just found outside, by the way, it's not strictly part of the tube station, more of the, the hoarding for the uh, development corporation, but they have installed there along this wall a fairly large roundel, which I just quite like. Back inside the station, there's also a huge piece of artwork hidden in plain sight. It's called Sunset Sunrise Sunset that is meant to be a rotating board but wasn't moving on the day that I visited. And the space that was here on opening day for retail units to use still hasn't been picked up on you either. Maybe in the future. It is surprisingly busy. Shoppers on a Sunday. Train there. Train there. It's an island platform, a wide island platform. It's usually one train in, one train out. I think this is the first time I've seen two trains in at the same time. Like other terminus stations, it's interesting to note that there's no point in having adverts on the walls because no passengers ever stand here and wait on the platforms. They just board the next train that's waiting to go out. And the whole station still has this large cavernous feel to it. One of my favourite things being that you can peer down from the ticket hall mezzanine level down onto the platform level where you can see the trains below. And whilst here, I remember that there was something that I'd been meaning to try out for a while, which I admit takes us one stop up the line from Battersea Power Station to Nine Elms. Okay, so I've come one down the line to Nine Elms just to try something out. I know this isn't strictly Battersea Power Station, noisy car. Uh, what it is, is that uh, the tube on the tube map often does dotted lines if they think there's a walking connection that is 10 minutes or less between two stations. And Nine Elms to Vauxhall, I think is close enough to be under the 10 minute mark, uh, but I've never actually timed it. Google Maps thinks it can do it in 11 minutes. I reckon I can do it in eight or nine. So I'm just walking it to see how long it takes me to walk from Nine Elms uh, to Vauxhall. And whilst I do that, let's hear from today's sponsor. So if you use the internet a lot like I do, you may be aware that there are companies on the web that collect your data known as data brokers, and they then sell the data that they have about you on to others. Now you can go around to all the individual companies that you know of and ask them to remove your data, but there could be hundreds of them that you'd have to contact in different ways, and sometimes they might even refuse your request. So that's why there's one company that will do all the hard work for you and clean up all your digital data on the internet for you, and that's what today's sponsor, Incogni, does for you. Sign up with them, tell them to work on your behalf, and they will go ahead and do all the hard work for you. And you can log in and check to see who they've contacted and what progress has been made. And you'll start to be notified from companies that your data has been removed. 
And this could just be something simple where you've signed up for a newsletter or loyalty card, and yet your data is used to contact you about something else from somebody else that you might not even know. Incogni will clean all this up for you and make it go away. If you want to know more, it's worth looking at the promo here. Go to incogni.com forward slash Jeff and the first 100 people get 20% off a great deal. There's a link down in the description below. And that's the walk complete. Checking my watch, I've got here in just uh, seven and a half minutes. So yes, I'm quite tall. I've got quite long legs, but I can walk from the entrance of Nine Elms to Vauxhall in seven minutes and 30 seconds. So in my mind, that does qualify for a little dotted line on the tube map. Except you may notice that those dotted walking connections, where the rule is 10 minutes or less, doesn't apply to any stations that are in the Zone 1 area. So if you look at the tube map, you'll notice that none of the Zone 1 area has a dotted line between any of the stations because they're all kind of close together, so there will be too many dotted lines. The dotted line rule only applies to stations on the map outside of Zone 1, but as previously discussed, because I think Nine Elms and Battersea Power Station Station should be in Zone 2, if that were the case, then Nine Elms to Vauxhall should, would have, a dotted line between them. Phew. Right, I'm going to uh, walk back again, and then there's one more bit to do at Battersea Power Station. If the roundel there looks crowded, by the way, that's because at 21 letters in its name, Batsy Power Station Station is the longest station name uh, that you'll find in a roundel on the network. Now, <clears throat> it's normally around this point in the video that I would cut away to a shot of the labyrinth, the black and white artwork with the little number in the corner. I'm just going to pause up here to explain what the labyrinths are all about. The labyrinths are an art installation commissioned and installed by TfL's Art on the Underground department. And back in early 2013, they installed one at every tube station on the network to celebrate the underground being 150 years old. They're designed by Turner Prize winning artist Mark Wallinger, and there's a complete half an hour documentary that you can watch which goes very deep into the whole project. There's a link in the description. Oh, and the number in the corner? Well, that pertains to the sequence that the station was visited by the 2009 Tube Challenge record holders meaning that Chesham is number one and Heathrow Terminal 5 is number 270. So you can work out the complete route that was taken if you note down all the numbers on all the labyrinths. And that is why Nine Elms and Batsy Power Station don't have a labyrinth art installation at them because they're the two newer stations which came after 2013. So before the artworks were put up, before that world record in 2013 was set, uh, otherwise they would be 271 and 272. Part of me wishes that Mark Wallinger would design two more unique roundels and number them 271 and 272 and install them here at these two stations just so that they have them. Gorn out the underground, if you're watching, why don't you do that? Uh, right, train's pulling in over there, but that one is out there, it's due in one minute, so um, it's time to go. And that is it, we are departing Battersea Power Station. Station, still funny. Parting zone one, it should be zone two. Uh, end of the line here, at this end of the northern line. And that's episode 18. There are just two more, two more episodes to go. Can you guess what stations they are? And we'll do the whole bingo card thing as well. All to come, press subscribe. Thanks for watching, see you soon, bye.